Hey everyone, I'm Ginger. Welcome to Ginger and Zimft. Today I'm talking about weight loss goals and specifically I want to address three pieces of advice that I hear given by experts quite often when it comes to weight loss. Now these three pieces of advice are intended to help you on your weight loss journey, to help ensure your success, but I have a major problem with these pieces of advice. So number one, set a weight loss goal, set an actual, what I refer to as a destination goal. It is a goal to lose a certain amount of weight, or it is a goal to weigh a certain weight, or it is a goal to be a certain dress size. Either way, you have an external goal that you want to meet. Number two, announce your goal to the world. Put it on Facebook, put it on social media, tell as many friends and family members as you possibly can. The point behind that piece of advice is to have a lot of people to hold yourself accountable to, to have a really good, strong support network, um, both on your social media and in your everyday life. If you tell all these people that you have this goal to lose 50 pounds, you're more likely to stay on track with your goal because you're not gonna wanna be embarrassed and not do it, or you're gonna have people around you supporting you along that, that way. Number three, join something. It doesn't matter if it's a support group or a gym or a program. The idea behind joining something, again, is to build that network of support, to have other people that you're being held accountable to. But it's also because if you spend money on something, you're investing in it, you are less likely to give up on it because you've invested money in it. My personal theory is this. I think these types of goals, which I look at and I see is like external goals are set up by extroverts and they work really well for other extroverted personality types. People who get their energy from the outside world, people who like to interact with the outside world, I think would do really well with this type of a goal. But for me, I'm an introvert. Those three things, quite honestly, those are the three things that kept me from ever trying to lose weight in the first place. I believed this type of advice to be true, okay? And when I would think about setting a weight loss goal, it was overwhelming. I don't like to fail. And this destination goal, it, A, it felt too big. Like there's no way I could ever lose 50 pounds. Um, breaking it up into smaller increments like five pound, 10 pound increments didn't work well for me because I knew that that big picture was still there and still a five pound, 10 pound increment every single day that I am not at that goal weight, every day that I'm not making visible movement in that direction feels like a failure. I have failed. This goal is so far away, this five pound goal is so far away, I'm never possibly going to reach it. So what I did, and I didn't do this with any thought behind it, this is just me looking back. Seven years ago, I started a weight loss journey. I didn't even call it a weight loss journey, um, and I'll explain why in a moment, but I set off and I ended up losing 100 pounds over two years, and I have kept it off now. I'm in my fifth year of maintenance. So. At that time, I would never have believed I could lose five pounds, much less 50 pounds, much less 100 pounds. What I ended up doing is I made an action goal. I made a goal that allowed me to achieve that goal and win on a daily basis. My goal was that every day I would move my body more than I was sedentary. That's it. I also made a goal to cut my food in half. Those two things were the only goals I ever made. The weight loss was a very pleasant side effect. So every single day that I succeeded in working out for 20 minutes um, and moving my body throughout the day was a win. Goal achieved, I won, I felt good, I had instant gratification.
There wasn't this, well, I did this work today, let's hope I'll lose five pounds in the end. The other issue that I have with these destination goals is it really takes the power of achieving those goals out of your hands because you don't have control over how your body is going to respond to exercise and diet. Some of us, it's gonna really have a great effect. Other people, they could do a lot of working out, they could do a lot of cutting back at food and they're just not gonna lose that much weight. And, and that's an individual metabolism thing that we, that you, that I, none of us has real control over. So why are we setting a goal that we have no control over achieving that's going to make us feel really bad when we're not, when we're not getting there? If you set a goal of action, you can fully achieve it every day. You have the full power to do that. And any weight loss is a side effect because it's not about that weight to begin with. Okay, so number two, announce it to the world. I did not announce it to the world. No, 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 I kept it private. It was about me and me alone. I didn't start talking about it until I had lost so much weight that people were noticing and asking and saying something to me. There are two reasons that I did this. The first is what I think is most important in theory, and that is when I talk about something, when I talk about a plan that I have or an idea that I have, it does something to me psychologically where it kind of like takes the sense of urgency out. I kind of feel like I've already done some action in it when I talk about it. And so that urgency goes away and then I'm not acting upon it. And that's a big one for me. That's the way my brain works. I know that it works that way. So I've learned that when I'm trying to achieve goals of any kind, I don't talk about it until I've had some success in it. And then I'll talk about it after the fact and you know, I'll talk about it a lot after the fact. But during, uh-uh, it's mine. Um, and again, that's to keep that sense of urgency. That's to not have my brain think that I've already done something that I haven't done. The other thing is this was about me and me alone. I'm the one that got into this mess. I need to be the one to get out of it. I don't need your approval or my husband's approval or family's approval. This is about me. Also, as an introvert, if I share something and then it's not happening, I'm gonna get embarrassed and I'm gonna hide and I'm not gonna go to social media and I'm gonna avoid all the social things, which I already kind of do anyway. I have to force myself to be more social. Um, and that, that's, you know, that's how I would get out of that. <laughs> I just, I'll avoid them and that's fine. So for me, announcing it to the world was not a good idea. Okay, the third thing joining something really you want me to already I already I have to go through the torture of working out which I hate but now you want me to find the extra time and extra energy to travel to a gym or a group or a class or something else and pay money for it I don't have money to spend on this I needed something where I didn't have to deal with any people. I don't want people looking at me at the gym. I don't want to deal with traffic to get there. I don't want to find that extra time in my schedule to commute. So I took that right out the window. This was about me. I'm an introvert. I get my energy from myself. I worked out in my kitchen alone. That was it. I took away every excuse I had as to why I wasn't working out. I didn't want to go running outside because of the traffic or because of the weather. If it's raining, I'm not going to run in the rain. If it's hot and sunny, I'm not going to run in that. I don't want people looking at me. I don't want to worry about having my earphones on and not hearing if people are coming up behind me. You know, I have a long list of reasons as to why I wouldn't go work out somewhere else. But in my home, no one has to see how funky I look when I work out and I can work out anytime I want. I just turn on the music or I turn on the TV and go. I can dance, I can run in place, I can run figure eights around my kitchen, I can do any kind of workout for free in my home. My body doesn't know what I'm doing, it doesn't care. It doesn't care if I go and I run three miles outside or I run in place what's equivalent to three miles on a pedometer. It ran three miles. 
As an introvert, I say to all the weight loss experts out there who love to give us these three pieces of advice, set a weight loss goal, announce it to the world, and join something. Stop giving everybody that advice, or at least offer the other side of it, because half of us, that's probably not gonna work for. So that is what I have to share with all of you. I am not a weight loss expert by any means, but I have personal experience and success in losing 100 pounds, and that's how I did it. It was that simple. You don't need to make it complicated. You need to look at yourself from within. You need to think about how your brain works, and you need to figure out a plan that works specifically for you and stop trying to fit into the box that we're all told we have to do. And that's all I have to say about that. So in other news in my world, I've learned that this same concept in goal setting can be applied in other areas of my life. It doesn't have to just be weight loss. I'm talking about like the external goal, a destination goal versus a goal of action. One reason that I've kind of been missing in action for the past eight weeks is because the last video that I made was a LuLaRoe haul. And I did that video for three reasons. Number one, I've wanted to learn how to do a haul video for YouTube. That's, that's one of the things that I've wanted to kind of get into doing. So it was practice for that. Number two, I just got new lighting equipment and wanted to give it a try. And number three, a good friend of mine, just launched her LuLaRoe business in January, and I was her first party hostess, and I wanted to share LuLaRoe with my friends ahead of time so they would get like really excited about coming to the party. So what ended up happening is I had three people come to my party, more than three people, but three people who were invited and they brought, you know, like a relative and stuff with them. Um, and these are three people who, in general are not excited about clothes and do not like shopping. And we had an absolute blast at the party, dressing up and playing around. And it was really, really cool to me to see the delight on faces when they found something that they liked. And that meant a lot to me. And I've talked a lot on my blog about how fashion has helped me through a lot of emotionally difficult times. Like when I get into a depression and I get into a funk, I often turn to fashion to help me out of that. It's, it's a form of expression, it's my creative artistic medium clothing. So I realized in that moment that, wow, this is an opportunity where I can share this and help other people who are in kind of a place where they're not feeling great and I can do something really simple to help them feel really great. Anyway, I decided after that party that I, I wanted to have my own boutique, that I wanted to have my own LuLaRoe business. I've been looking for something to do for a couple of years since my kids went back to school. Usually my ideas involve me going back to school and getting a degree in a useful field at this time in my life. Um, and my husband is like usually not a big fan of that because financially it's a horrible decision for us. But as a stay at home mom, I've been a stay at home mom for 12 years and it it's a lot of personal sacrifice and it's worth it. I love it and I want to continue being that stay at home mom for my kids, um, but I need to be able to bring in some income and I've realized when I'm doing odd and end jobs just for the money, I'm starting to feel really not great. They don't pay well. So my sense of worth is at minimum wage level. Um, they're usually doing things that I don't enjoy and that that starts to wear on me because I'm already a stay-at-home mom who's sacrificing a lot of my personal self in order to be in that role and now I'm doing it even more and it's just kind of like I've already been on that line of the life is being sucked out of me <laughs> which I don't mean that I don't mean that like literally because my kids I love my kids but you sacrifice so much and it becomes a habit that you lose something Okay, and I couldn't stand that then the employment was yet another something that I'm losing. 
LuLaRoe, for me, the idea of it, of having my own boutique, of getting to style clothing for other people every day, and the business itself is a lot like blogging, and I love blogging. Like, I really love blogging. It breaks my heart that my blog is so completely inconsistent and hasn't been developed to the point, to the level of where I would want it to be, but blogging takes a lot of time, and when I spend my day blogging, and not doing other things um, to help my family, I feel guilt. And so I have a lot of guilt associated on the days that I do a lot of blogging. I can't usually complete a full post in a single day. And so like if I give myself one day a week to do the blogging um, and then life happens and gets in the way, I, I don't get posts finished. And there are, are a lot of posts that I have in varying phases of finishedness <laughs> um, that never get posted and and that drives me bonkers so LuLaRoe might open up some doors in that area it might allow me to be able to blog more um, because then I can be my own like my own advertisement instead of building my blog up to a level where I can get advertisement and therefore oh look honey I'm paid to blog now I can pay myself to blog. <laughs> so we'll see how all of that works. But in terms of goal setting, um, I've been watching a lot of training videos on doing my own business. And setting a business goal and monthly sales goal is a huge part of doing LuLaRoe or any retail business, of course. And yet for me, again, coming from the place of being introverted and not liking exterior goals, coming from a place where I hate to fail and I would rather set myself up to succeed on a daily basis and have that instant gratification of, woo, I won, I did this. Instead of setting a sales goal for the month, I'm going to be setting a goal of action just like I did for my weight loss. And that goal of action will be to, I don't know, to post a certain number of posts on social media every day. And so every single day that I go and I do that, woo, I've won. Now that comes from when you make your external sales goal and you say, oh, I want to sell $12,000 a month worth of clothing, which to me is what, you know, completely mind boggling. Who can do that? Um, I know how they did it. I've studied it. I know how they did it. I know the plan that they used to do it. So why doesn't my goal become the plan? And then just like the weight loss was a side effect, a very pleasant, wonderful side effect, so will the sales. Because I hate sales. I'm not into sales. That's not why I went into LuLaRoe. So anyway, it's going to be a little bit of an experiment. And it it's funny because I was creating this video for weight loss at the time that I decided to go through and start up my LuLaRoe business. And so once I started comparing, I'm like, oh, hey, this is kind of the same concept. We can do this. We can see if it's going to work out the same way. So that's my big news. Um, so the past eight weeks have been really crazy because yeah, I, I decided to sign up for that. You go into what is called a queue where you're kind of in waiting and during that time you're supposed to be doing all these things to set up and prepare for the launch of your business but in my case because so i lost my mom over the summer we have 4,000 square feet of furniture in our 2,000 square foot home and so we've been living like hoarders and we like burrow through these little tunnels in each room kind of going around and the trails change over time as we find homes for different pieces of furniture. Um, so I've had to deal with that. I've had to deal with cleaning out the house and it's huge. And then I had family come to visit and we had two birthdays and we had major snowstorms. And so lots and lots and lots have been going on over the past eight weeks. And unfortunately my blog, my blog is what suffered. And I'm sad about that. But like I said, if if I do this right, according to me, um, I should be able to blog a bit more. Yay! So that's all I have for you today. <laughs> Life updates and kind of an alternate alternative way of looking at goal setting. Hopefully the advice can strike a chord with you and can be of some help with you on your weight loss journey. 
And that's all for now. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.